Hi all, uh, been a while since I made a video, but I thought this one might be helpful. Uh, what you see uh, in front of you is an Overland uh, Canadian Pacific Railroad E8A diesel, uh, and I have the shell separated from the body. Uh, and I'm actually in the process of installing uh, DCC and lighting uh, into this unit. Uh, the reason I, I started collecting a few Canadian Pacific pieces is that Canadian Pacific um, powered the Alouette, a, uh, a name train that ran uh, from Boston up through Lowell, up through Manchester and Concord, up to Montreal. And uh, I thought it would be neat to actually recreate that train on my uh, New Hampshire main uh, layout. Uh, which runs from Lowell up through Kingsborough, Westford, towards Nashua and Manchester. So I, I picked up the uh, the E8A. I actually have a, a H1B Hudson um, that eventually I'll put some uh, sound in and DCC, and I've been picking up a few cars. Uh, but I need to have DCC in these. Now, this uh, locomotive runs very smoothly uh, out of the box. I tested it out on the layout using DC and it ran just fine. Um, so it's a good candidate for a DCC upgrade. And as I was working on this, I thought, hey, why don't I show folks um, what I'm doing here? So uh, first of all, what I'll do is I'll show you some of the, um, the pieces that uh, I'm using, the components that I'm using for the install. Uh, so uh, I'll be using a lock sound uh, decoder. It's a, um, let's see, just set that aside. It's a, uh, a lock sound, um, uh, lock sound five DCC decoder. And it's been programmed with the EMD uh, dual uh, engine, uh, 12 cylinder 567 um, sound files, which is the right sound files for this locomotive. And I'll be doing the uh, install here on, so uh, let's see, we'll hold it up from this side here. Uh, the top blue piece is the lock sound uh, decoder, and it's actually plugged into a Nix um, train, uh, Nix trains decoder buddy. So I'll be using the decoder buddy uh, to manage all the wiring in there. Uh, and the good news is, I'll show you in a minute, there really is a lot of room uh, inside this diesel shell. Uh, a few other components, uh, I'll be putting a lock sound um, power pack in there uh, and this is the lock sound power pack uh, i'll show you that in comparison to the size of the the board here uh, and i can tuck that in I'll, I'll stick that in place and then i can actually fit two uh, sugar cube speakers in here i have uh, two of these and i'll just put this in the clips here so it's a little easy to hold um, you can see the the speaker right there on top that is a, uh, let's see, 8 ohm, 15 millimeter by 11 millimeter supersonic mini speaker. And it's going in this uh, case, which is uh, the corresponding supersonic mini enclosure. Um, and that will, should work out pretty well. I also want to show you the, the lighting that I'm putting in. Now, I found these on eBay. Uh, and I bought a few different uh, sets. They, they weren't that expensive at all. Uh, so for the headlamp, I'm actually using, this is a, uh, a 1.8 millimeter warm light LED. And you can see how small it is. Um, I'll show you, this is the, try to show you some uh, sense. So this is just a little applicator. Um, and you can see how small that head of that light is, which works out pretty well. It fits right in the, the spot I drilled out uh, for the headlamp. Uh, these come with a resistor already wired in. Uh, you may not need that with the decoder board. I believe this decoder has uh, resistors built into it, but I will confirm that. And so that's the headlight. And then these are really neat, very small. Um, let's see if I can get that in an angle where you can actually see it. Move my hand out of the way. All right, I think that little tiny tip, that is uh, a T0603WM Microlitz warm white LED. And I have uh, 
just slightly rubber cemented these in place over the marker lights, the two jewel lights that sit over the, uh, the number boards. And I've also used one of these for the reverse light. Uh, and they actually throw out a sufficient light for that. Uh, it should work out well. I'll show you inside the shell, which I have taken off here. If you take a look here, you can see uh, the wiring is tucked up neatly to the side. Let's see. So you see the wires running up, tucked up underneath. I did right here is the um, uh, the train compartment where the engineer would sit. And so there's two little screws to take that off. I took that out of the way and I had plenty of access to get the headlight in underneath here, as well as the two marker lights. And I've kind of, I'll be able to tuck them nice and neatly along the side. And then down in the very back here, uh, you can see the wires running towards the, the back wall of the locomotive, the rear bulkhead. And that's where the um, uh, the rear light is. Uh, let's see, I'm not sure if you can make this out. I'll try the angle. There we go. You can just make it out right there. We'll try to zoom it in a little bit. There's the speaker cabinet. That's one of the speaker cabinets adhered to the... Uh, the, the engineer's compartment to the back wall there, so it's tucked up out of the way. And if we go the other way, towards the back of the locomotive, let's see, right there, and I'll zoom it in a little bit. You can see the speaker compartment on the floor towards the very rear of the engine, and that's the second speaker. So I'll be mounting the uh, decoder up to the roof section here over one of those fans, and that should give me plenty of room and clearance uh, away from the engine. If I move these two pieces together a little closer for you to see, um, here is the chassis, and the chassis is going to fit in right about there. So... Chassis will be in here. A decoder will fit right up here with plenty of clearance. Uh, and then we'll have some room for the, um, the power pack up on the roof on this side here. So with that, I'm going to uh, put in my other set of speaker wires. Uh, and then we'll get set and we'll start working on the decoder mount. And I'll update. Okay, so... Um, one of the first things I'm going to do here is I'm going to desolder the uh, track wires from the motor. So we've got our red track wires coming up to the top, and on the bottom we have our black track wires. So we'll disconnect those. I heat it up and tin my soldering iron. So that's ready to go. And then I do have this handy little device here that when I heat things up, it'll... Um, help me to pull the solder away. So we'll warm this up a little bit. Once that starts to soften up, we'll pop the desoldering tool right on there. All right, that's looking pretty loose. All right, good, those are off. I'm gonna see if I can clean that up a little more. There's probably a hole in that tab. Softening. Yeah, yeah. All right, maybe no hole. We'll take a look. I'm going to flip it onto the base and do the same thing. Heat that up a wee bit until it softens up. is off. That's good. So I can get that excess solder off there as well. Perfect. And what I want to show you is on this um, on this decoder, these two pads here on the decoder buddy, 
this is where the motor control goes. So the gray and orange wires will connect to these two pads, and then those red and black track wires will connect here and here on each end. Okay, I'm back, and uh, I've been doing some more soldering, uh, and I know it looks a little messy there, but I'll walk you through what we've got going on right now. So first of all, over here, these are the track wires. So a little fire. So here's uh, the track wire on this side, the black and the red. And basically all I did is I, I extended them a bit and I put them in this little cable harness to keep them protected. And they're coming out this end. And these are going to be connected, the red and the black, these two, the red and the black wire here, are going to be connected to the track points on the board, on the uh, Dakota board, the Nix Trains board, right there and right there. So that's the next step. And then on the opposite end, you'll see um, I have my red and my black wire, and those will be connected up top to this pad at the top and then to this pad on the bottom. That's pretty straightforward. Um, the other thing that happened here is, uh, zoom in a little closer, you can see I now have a gray wire right here that I connected to the underside of the motor, connected it up right here. And I actually drilled a small hole in the frame and ran that gray wire up along the side so it won't get caught in anything. And then it's harder to see, but I connected the orange wire to the top of the motor. And I just cut them into this uh, little cable harness. And just to keep everything neat, tucked up out of the way, um, so it doesn't get caught in the flywheel or any of those uh, little challenges that we could run into. So the other thing I did here is I connected up my ESU um, power pack here. And this has three wires coming out. As you can see, it has a red, a white, and a black. And my plan was to connect this to the Nix Trains board here. They have uh, a spot on this board uh, on the other side here uh, that is for a two-wire power pack. So if you have a, a Keep Alive that has two wires, you can wire it directly to the uh, Nix Train board. Uh, however, you can't wire a three-wire ESU directly to the Nix Train. So what I had to do is I had to wire it to the uh, Lock Sound 5 DCC decoder right here. And there's three, there's a bunch of little pads on this side. And the top is uh, red, white, black. And that was a bit of a devil, uh, getting those on nice and clean without destroying anything. Um, and hopefully I haven't. Uh, but uh, we've got the power pack in place, and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to solder up the track boards so we can take a look, um, get the, the track wires in place, uh, and then I'm going to fit the uh, orange and the uh, gray wires on temporarily, and I'm going to test the motor. Before I do the lights, before I do the speakers, before I do too much more, I'm going to test the motor, make sure that runs. So we'll uh, get those wired in, and then we'll do a test run. Uh, folks, just one little thing I do want to show you. Uh, I am tinning the ends of all these Ys before I connect them onto the pads. I have this um, flux pen here uh, that I, I, I forget where I got this. Um, so I put a little flux on each of these. And then I'm just going to tin the ends with a little bit of solder. And there's a couple of reasons for doing this. One, it keeps the wire strands together so they're not um, jumping onto a pad. The other reason is it makes it easier for it to adhere when you go to heat it up onto the pad. And you want to stay on those pads as short a time as possible uh, because they're adjacent to other pads and the solder will run and cause real problems. So I just wanted to show you that I, I'm tinning those. The other thing I learned when I was trying to connect to the... I better put that down. <laughs> when I was trying to connect to these small little pads here, is I put a little bit of solder, almost a, if you could call it a drop of solder, on the tip of the solder and iron. I put a little of the, the uh, flux on that pad, and then I would just put the drop of solder on the pad, 
And then when you have the tinned wire, you can just sit the tinned wire on top of the pad and touch it quickly to move it off. Um, okay, so now I'm going to solder on those track wise and I'll be back. So right now uh, I'm using JMRI and uh, Dakota Pro uh, on, my, on my laptop just to test this out on this test track here. And it's, uh, it's moving along at a very slow speed. If you listen, you can't really hear it making too much noise either. And I'll pick it up a little bit. And I'll have to hit the emergency stop before it hits the bumper. And we'll bring it back. At a nice slow pace. So that wiring has worked out. We'll still have to uh, still have the speakers to connect and the lighting to connect. Uh, so there's still plenty of opportunity for uh, me to make some mistakes here. Uh, but so far, so good. Uh, we've got power. We know what we need to do uh, with the motor wires. We'll just swap them. Uh, and I just put them on temporarily, by the way. I, mean, I don't know. We'll try to zoom in here so you, maybe you can see it. That would be these right here, This uh, the orange and gray wire. You can feed them up through the bottom of the board. So I tin the ends. I fed them through the hole, just pulled them over and taped them in place just so we could do the test run. Uh, so I'll swap those over, side of them in. Uh, and then the next phase will be to get the speakers connected. We'll see how the sound's working. Then we'll work on the um, the lighting. All right, I'll be back. So now I'm going to um, solder on the speaker wires, and then we'll solder the speaker wires to the uh, Nick Dakota board. And uh, honestly, this is pretty straightforward. The trickiest part will be soldering to the Nick Dakota board. Um, I, I have some short um, speaker leads here that I've just made out of some very uh, fine gauge uh, wire. And I'm just tinning the ends so they'll be quicker to solder. So I just use my little uh, vice clamp here. Let's see, I did that side. I still have to do these. So we'll put a little solder on each of those. Make sure I get them. And on, when I trim these speaker wires, um, one end I trimmed a little longer, or stripped them a little longer. You'll see uh, this end is a little longer than this end because the uh, shorter end will be going on the Nix Dakota board. And I'll probably end up trimming those. And the longer end is actually going to go into the speaker. So right here, this is the... Um, the mini uh, sugar cube speaker I've got, I've already inserted the speaker in there and I actually can use the baffle. Um, you'll see this is a, a baffle that actually snap again. So the speaker in the rear where I have a little more room will actually be a, twice this depth, um, which will be pretty handy and should help with a uh, sound. So well, let me drop this, snap this back in there. And we'll hold it in the clip. And then we're going to take one of these longer leads and slip it under here. And then use our tweezers just to bend it up a bit. And once we like it, we'll twist it and solder it. Okay, so I have the two wires in place. I'm just gonna put a little solder on there. Lock them in. Oh, and that one popped up again. I'll fix that after. Just coming in here. That's good enough to hold those in. 
And I want to trim. There's a little bit hanging off here. I'm going to trim off. And do the same thing on the other side here. There we go. Okay. All right, I'm going to tuck that piece back down, and then we'll solder it onto the motherboard. Okay, a slightly different angle on the camera uh, help you to see uh, what I'm doing here. And we're getting ready. We're going to um, solder the uh, speaker wires, these two speaker wires, to these two pads, the inside pads here and here on the Dakota board. Oh, I'm sorry, the Dakota Buddy. So let's see. I'm going to start with my shorter one first. And this is a this solder. Fortunately, these solder pads on the Dakota Buddy are very helpful. I'm going to use my tweezers here, I think, to hold this. That'll be... And then I'll just take my soldering iron here. And I'm just going to touch them on there. In fact, I'm going to just trim that. I, you don't need a very long lead on here. So I'm just going to trim that down a little bit. Make it a little shorter. Okay, set it right in the middle there. That, that one's on. Grab the other side. I'm going to again trim this just a little shorter because you don't want the wire overhanging into the circuit board anywhere. Set it on that pad. And just going to heat that up a little bit. Okay, now I have I have this speaker is connected on this end, and then the other speaker is already in place, and I have the two wires coming out, and these two green wires here. Pull them up. And based on the length, I think they're, I don't think they're quite too long. I'll trim them a little bit. So I'm going to trim these. I'll strip them on the ends. I'll tin them, and then we're going to mount them. And a little, it's a little tricky to get to because we have this little adjustment board. But they are going to go right in this area here on these two pads. All right. When we've got that done, I'll be back. Okay. Now I am going to test the speakers out. There's a speaker in here in the cab, mounted on the back side of the cab right in there and then i also have one sitting here for now that will actually go in the back side um, near the rear bulkhead but until i put the board and everything in uh, we we're not going to mess with that um, and so i've got over here you can see i've got uh well you probably can't see that great i've got dakota pro up on my um, laptop and i will turn the sound on and see what we get here. Fingers crossed. All right. I hear sound. And you can't really tell from there, but I can hear it's coming from the speaker inside. And I can feel the vibrations. It's coming from the rear speaker as well. When I put that inside, it'll have more of a baffle and an echo. Let's see, what else do we have here? We have our bell. Got our horn. Our decoupler. Uh, some of these other effects we'll, we'll check out now. Uh, I'm, I can't give it too much throttle. You'll hear it throttle up because these cables, I don't want to be ripping them out. But let's try a little throttle up. I can hear the engine picking up. Alright, let's 
Bring it down. All right. I haven't uh, worked with any of the sound settings. I still need to install my lighting, uh, but so far, um, I'd say so good. We, we've uh, got speakers, we've got motor power. Uh, now we'll see how we make out with the lights. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I have the wires all soldered in. Uh, there's a lot going on there, and the Dakota Buddy does help make it a little easier. I'm going to show you, this is the um, where you solder in on the Dakota Buddy. So I have my uh, speaker wires in down below. I have my marker light wires in here. My um, The headlight, the rear light is soldered here. Um, so these are the function pads of this side. And these are a um, positive common on this side here. Um, I have my keep alive uh, power pack is soldered directly into the ESU board and then down this end you'll see I've got my speaker wires and my track wires uh, similarly track wires on this end and speaker wires in the center so now I'm going to tuck this all in there I have some um, double-sided insulating tape uh, I have some electrical tape uh, that I'll use I'll tuck everything in there nice and neat and we'll see uh, what it looks like All right, believe it or not, I was able to tuck all of that wiring, those speakers, the power pack, and the circuit board in here. Um, you can see I have the circuit board uh, double-sided tape. I use some um, uh, scotch double-sided tape pads to tape that to the um, roof of the uh, wagon here. Um, right over here, you can see the rear speaker is in place. Uh, up here, we have uh, used some of that double-sided tape to put the uh, capacitor in place, and then you've got your front speaker. Uh, I've tried to protect my wiring. I've used uh, some wraps to keep things organized and such. Um, hopefully, everything is up out of the way. I only had one or two wires pop off that I had to re-solder. Yep, yep, I, I have all those same problems. I had... Uh, had to replace the LED that I had put in the taillight because I must have shorted it at some point. But uh, I think right now we're ready to go. So let me button this up and we'll test it out. Well, I managed to fit the decoder and the speakers and the Keep Alive all in the uh, locomotive. It's all tucked in there nicely. Somehow I managed to get the lights to work as well. Um, I still need to do some tuning on the uh, Dakotas, change some of the settings, uh, but I thought I'd, I'd show you and let you have a listen to this. Uh, so let me fire up. Uh, 1800 is on the track. She's actually in Middlesex Yard uh, on my uh, Boston to Maine, uh, New Hampshire, Maine uh, layout. Uh, let's see, we'll give her some sound. And let's see, we'll get our headlight on. There we go. We have our marker lights. Um, that's something I have to adjust. You'll know, I don't know if you can tell uh, they're strobing um, right now. Uh, and that's a setting in the ESU uh, lock sound, uh, which I will uh, work on. Um, and other than that, I think um, she's ready to take a lap around the layout. Uh, we'll pull it forward a little bit.
and reverse her. Notice that the uh, reverse light's on and the bell came on. So that's my project. Um, let me put a couple of uh, passenger cars on there and we'll send it for a lap around the layout. All right, here we go. We have a nice uh, test run with a, we've got a beautiful uh, brass uh, RPO baggage uh, coach behind her as well as two heavyweight coaches. So we'll, we'll send her out along the line, see how she does.